Ships of the Sea Museum is housed in the elegant mansion built for William Scarborough in 1819. Scarborough was a merchant prince, president of the Savannah Steamship Company, and the principal financial backer for the first steamship to cross the Atlantic Ocean, the SS Savannah. The Savannah was a product of progressive thought, a ship of dreams. She would accomplish something that people thought could not be done and usher in a new era of oceanic transportation. She was the brainchild of Moses Rogers, the most accomplished open water steamboat captain in the country. And he is with us today. Captain Rogers, welcome. Thank you, pleasure. So how did you go about creating the world's first steamship? I convinced a consortium of Savannah elites, including Mr. William Scarborough, by far the most enthusiastic, that my plan for a transatlantic steam packet was feasible. In 1818, we began construction on an already existing hull in a New York shipyard. And in April of 1819, she was here in Savannah. We took a celebratory cruise to Charleston carrying passengers in hopes of bringing President James Monroe back on board. He declined and finished his coastal defense tour by land. He arrived on, in Savannah on December 8th. And a few days later, we took a small cruise down the Savannah River. Well, when did Savannah begin her groundbreaking voyage? Her maiden voyage began May 22nd of 1819. The owners had decided because of the financial panic of 1819 to sell her in Europe. It took us around 23 days, but we only ran the engines for about 80 to 100 hours, mostly due to limited coal water space. After a brief stay in Liverpool, which was marked by a humorous series of events with the Royal Navy and the British press, we made our way to the Baltic. So what happened with the Royal Navy? Well, first, the revenue cutter Kite tried to catch us and had to fire four warning shots at us to get us to stop. Then I threatened to use the hot water engines against some British sailors. And finally, the British press was convinced that our final destination was actually St. Helena to rescue Bonaparte. Oh, wait, but there were no hot water engines. There were not. <laughs> so how did she go over in the Baltic? A little less humorously, I hope. She was very well received in the Baltic. She was very well received everywhere she went. Uh, the King of Sweden offered $100,000 for her in iron ore and hemp, commodities that would appreciate once they reached the United States. Uh, we had to decline, and then we sailed to Port St. Petersburg in Russia, where we were very well received, very enthusiastically received, and had hopes for a very quick sail. That came to naught, and we were forced to sail back to Savannah, landing here in December, and then sailing up to Washington, D.C., where I hope to convince the Navy or the Revenue Department to take her in. They declined, and at the same time, a lawsuit was filed against Mr. Scarborough, against the ship, and against the company. She was sold at auction, and on November 5th, 1821, she wrecked on Fire Island off of New York. An inglorious end to such a noble endeavor. Very much so. In 1820, Due to his investment in the steamship Savannah, an economic depression, and a fire which destroyed many of the residential and business districts in the city, William Scarborough was declared an insolvent debtor. He could no longer own property in Chatham County. As a result, his home was sold at a Marshall's sale, but purchased by his brother-in-law, and the Scarboroughs remained in the home for the next 20 years. Despite its numerous occupants over its 200-year history, the building is still referred to as the William Scarborough House. Join us next time as we take a look at the very first USS Savannah.